In the last video, we designed a nice squeeze page in SketchUp. Now we need to translate it into code. Note that all the files from this tutorial can be downloaded for free at the link listed in the description. I'm Heidi from Design for Founders. Let's get coding. First, we'll need to extract all images. In this case, we'll only need this ebook and the background photo. The rest can be redone in CSS. SketchUp has a nice feature called export at the bottom of the screen here. All we need to do is click this export button and type in a file name. We'll do the same with background. Now the background photo as we see it here in Finder is relatively large. Fortunately there is a way to make it smaller with just a few clicks. Open up the browser and open compressor.io. Click on this big button here and then simply upload the image. Then I'll just download the file back again. In this case the image was compressed down by 70% and without any visible loss of quality. You can use a different email client, but I'll use MailChimp to collect emails and deliver the free book to new subscribers. Before we get started with code, open up a MailChimp account and create a new list. I normally start projects like this one by using Unsemantic, a neat little CSS framework for building responsive website. Click on download here to get a fresh version of it. In this folder, we'll delete everything by this file responsive.html and the assets folder. In the assets folder, we'll get rid of this SAS folder and clean up the CSS folder. We only need files demo CSS, IE CSS and unsemantic grid responsive.css. Be sure to move files back to where they were. Also, drop in a new images folder and drop in the two extracted images. We'll first take this responsive.html file and rename it into index.html. Then open it up in your text editor of choice. I'll drop a few links to my recommendations in the description. It's great if your text editor features syntax highlighting, which paints parts of code in different colors. There's a lot of things we don't need in this file, so we'll simply delete everything that's between the body tags. Leave these script tags at the end. Then we'll go and change the title tag where it now says Unsemantic CSS Framework. We want it to say something else, like Epic Freebie for Travelers, so I'll paste that in. If I now save this file and open it up in browser, it will surely say epic freebie for travelers in the title up here. Ok, we can see that it's working. Let's now create the basic structure of the document. Unsemantic is offering a couple of very neat pre-made classes for you to use. For the beginners in HTML, I'd like to point out that these are not default to HTML. So if you use a different framework or no framework at all, just assigning these classes to elements wouldn't have any effect. Let's start by typing this code. The grid container do doesn't do anything, it's just the start of the framework. What's much more interesting is this do with two pre-made classes added. Basically this 40 after grid creates a column that is 40% of the whole width. On mobile we want this width to be larger, so we added 100 which equals to 100%. Now we'll add a third class, which is push30 to the same div. This will make sure that this div floats in the middle, push to the left by 30%. Now we'll replace this add form here with the content. First I'll add the ebook image. Then I'll paste in the headline and wrap it in h1 tags and the subheadline and paragraph tags. And here's where MailChimp's form comes in. After logging in and creating a list, click on this arrow and click Sign up forms. Select Embedded forms and then pick Naked. 
and then remove all ticks from selections on the left and click only required fields here. Now select and copy the generated code on the right. Again, there is cleaning up to be done. Try to delete as much due clutter as you can. Ideally, you will end up with something like this. Make sure to always delete dues in pairs. I'll also change the value of this tag into get free ebook and type in the placeholder tag for email field. If we save this file and check it out in the browser, it will look nothing like the mockup we designed. But bear with me as we use the magic of CSS. But first we'll need to add fonts. As we can see here in the mockup, we used a font that is not normally installed on the computers. That's why we need to embed it. And fortunately, Google is offering a very quick solution. I already searched for Roboto in Google Fonts directory. In the mockup, I used ultra bold and light italic, so I'll only pick those. Then I'll copy this code here and I'll paste it just before the closing of the head tag. And that's it. First, let's add the background photo. Open up demo.css and delete everything there. Then type this. The first line will call our image and the second will stretch it to the size of the window. Then I'll add the white box. I can do that easily by simply selecting the box in the sketch and select copy CSS attributes. I'll call one of these dues classes starting with a dot and paste the code between curly brackets. As you can see, Sketch already generated some of the styles required. I'll do the same for the rest of the elements. Since there's only one H1 element on this page, I don't need to add special classes to it to apply styles. Ok, let me save this and see what happened. The page looks a lot more like the design, but it's not quite there yet. First, let's make everything aligned to center. We do that by adding the following line. The button doesn't look right either. We'll make it expand the entire width of the containing box, remove the ugly grey border and make the text uppercase. I'll also add some padding to it to make it breathe more. When I move my cursor on the button, it doesn't look clickable. This line will change that. Now let's fix the email field in a similar way. This white box could use some more spacing, so let's add this snippet to .grid40 class and the important tag since there is another style of overwriting it. Then I'll push this box downwards as it's done in the mockup. The image of the book can now be moved upwards. Ok, that's it. We have a functioning squeeze page. You can also create a custom thank you page where your new subscribers download the freebie or you simply send it in your welcome email. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. For more tips on effective startup design, visit designforfounders.com. Please subscribe to our channel if you like this video.